10 sections of free code camps learn basic CSS by building a cafe menu. So step 11, up until now you have been limited regarding the presentation and appearance of the content you create. To start taking control, add a style element within the head tag. Um, so that's right, we've only actually um, sort of coded out some HTML so far. So within the head tag, so not the body, the head, I'm gonna create a style tag like this. Um, and I assume we need to close it off like so. And because it's in the head, we won't see anything rendered to the page. So let's just check the code. And still checking. Add a star element within the head tag. Yeah, that should be it. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let me just refresh the page here. Maybe it's bombed out. There we go, style, check your code. Cool, there we go, we've all passed. Okay, so let's go to the next challenge. So number 12, you can add a, or sorry, you can add style to an element by specifying it in the style element. Um, bit of a tongue twister and setting a property for it like this. So you have a property and a value. Um, and this is the element that we're selecting, I guess. So, Enter, center your h1 element um, yeah, by using text align as the property and the value as center. So within the style tag, we then want to target the h1 like so. And we open up a pair of curly braces and the property is text dash align and the value is center. Um, and that's ER, uh, I guess for sort of American, uh, or yeah, American English um, sort of had to relearn how to write center um, for a lot of CSS, but anyhow, uh, let, cool, that's all passed, let's submit that. And obviously, as we can see, our header, or the, the H1 tag, which is cafe menu, is now in the middle of the page. Uh, sorry, this, this H1 down here, camper cafe. So step 13, in the previous step, you've used a type selector, select the H1, so that's a type selector. Go ahead and center the H2 and P elements with a new type selector for each one. Um, so even though we're sort of centering the same, um, they want us to do separate, um, what was it called, type selectors for, for each of them. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy and paste and the P element will have the same and you can see everything centered now. Um, and maybe in future challenges or like in the next sort of couple of sections, um, we'll see how we can actually reduce this to just one line of code where this property and value is actually being applied to all of these elements um, and sort of different ways around that. So let's go ahead. So step 14, uh, you now have three type selectors with the exact same styling. You can add the same group of styles to many elements by creating a list of selectors. Each selector is separated with commas like this. Um, so that's what I was talking about. So we can basically comma separate the selectors. And instead of having all of this, if I delete the two that we just did um, and go over here, so we've got H1, H2, and a P tag, like so. And you can see the styling is sort of kept. Um, so that's one way to, to group styles um, in CSS. So step 15, you have styled three elements by writing CSS inside the style tags. So this works, but since there will be many more styles, it's best to put all of them in a separate file and link to it. So we call this a style sheet. Um, and that's obviously the acronym for CSS, which is cascading style sheets. Um, so if we've created a separate styles.css file for you, which is over here, and this is our index.html, and what do they want us to do? Well, let me just close the HTML one. Um, I can change between the files, I think as I just did. So start by rewriting the styles you've created. Um, make sure to include the opening and closing style tags. Um, so let's see, I guess if we just grab this over here. Um, but actually, yeah, this is HTML, so we won't take that away. Um, and let's just check the code. Cool, and that's all passed. So what I would have expected is that we're actually gonna, we would need to link the style sheets. Um, it looks like they're kind of doing it for us behind the scenes. Um, so let's submit and go to the next challenge there. 
So yeah, now that we have the CSS in styles.css, we can actually remove this style element like so. And you'll see that all of the um, CSS or so the HTML jumps back to the left hand side. It's not been centered anymore because that actually the index.html was centering everything from before. Um, so if I check the code, we can see that passes. So step 17, we actually need to link the style sheet here. So we have this style text align center for all of these elements, but actually it's not linked to the index.html file. Um, so that's why they're not being applied. So I believe we want to just do a, a link tag like so. And this is a self-closing. So if you remember, we put the forward slash within the opening tag, so it's self-closing effectively. And we want to do rel equals style sheet uh, like so. And href is then a link to the sheet itself. So for this one, we'll just do styles.css. And that's going to know that it's this style sheet. Um, you can obviously kind of use that as well. Um, but actually, yeah, I'm not sure. It depends on the folder structure, how you might want to reference it. But there we go. That gives us the, the centered text again, based on this styles within this sheet being applied to the index.html file. So let's check that code and that all passes. And step 18 for the styling of the page to look similar on mobile as it does on a desktop or laptop. We need to add a meta element with a special content attribute. Um, so basically you just need to add this to the page. Um, and this isn't something you generally um, sort of probably too concerned with it. If you're using a framework, for example, um, so, you know, search Angular for you React um, or, you know, any meta frameworks, they'll normally kind of put this in as default. Um, and obviously, if you find you need to change it, um, you can go ahead and do so. But yeah, so I've never actually had to add this, this meta tag in. But yeah, that seems to, was it width, device width, initial scale 1.0. So um, just related to the viewport. So let's submit that. Cool. Step 19, the text is centered again. So the link to the CSS file is working. Add another style to the field. Sorry, add another style to the file that changes the background color to brown for the body element. So let's select our body and then we want to do background dash color and that will be uh, brown like so. And there we go. We've got our brown background color on the whole of the body. So finally, step 20, that brown, that brown background makes it hard to read the text. Change the body elements background to burly wood. So it has some color, but you're still able to read the text. Um, so as you can see, it is a bit difficult with a darker, slightly darker background, or certainly darker than white, and then dark text, difficult to read. If I do to set it to burly wood, it's much easier, and it sort of pops out on the page there. And it looks like that is the, um, yeah, sort of the start of our menu in terms of styling. So let's go to the next one. And I will actually continue this in the next video. So hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.